Okay, here we are with another punch out. This one with obvious color problems. I believe that is the bottom screen. Let me flip this. That's the top screen. And that's the bottom screen. So you can see the colors are way off. So my first suspicion is it's something to do with the palette, color palette. And that's on the small board here. And that generates the actual RGB signals that get sent to, there's two pairs of them. Well, I'm sorry, there is a pair of them. Uh, because there's two monitors. One for the upper and the lower. And I actually managed to find a schematic for that guy. All the other uh, PDFs that I found online only included the, uh, the video and CPU board schematic, but there was one version I found that actually had the background uh, board schematic. I believe it's called CHP02 back. So I'm assuming it's for it's got background tile information and some other color stuff. So anyway, um, these are the signals that get sent to the monitor, RGB for each of the monitors, and there's proms, color proms associated with those two, and those guys are here, uh, right here. So I'm going to start there, and then kind of work my way back. It could be that there's a problem uh, with these uh, PALs themselves, I'm sorry, with the proms, or it could be the circuitry leading up to them, you know, the addressing circuitry is screwed up, and so rather than picking the proper colors, it's picking, you know, obviously improper colors, so... We're going to start there, and we're going to work our way back, and uh, see if we can figure out what's going on. Okay, now what I'm doing is just taking the ROMs, I'm throwing them in, the PROMs rather, color PROMs, throwing them in my programmer here, and I have the main source, the actual contents uh, of the PROMs that, that are known to be good. Um, I'm loading them up from the main source into the programmer here, and basically it'll read the PROM and just make sure that they match. So let me see if I can find it here. This is actually the chip located at 7E. So we're going to head and read that in, and then I can do a verify. Da -da -da. And we're good. So I'll do the rest of the proms, and that'll at least let me know if the data on the proms uh, is valid. In other words, it'll let me know if I have bad proms or not. All right, so I took a look at the contents of the color problems, and they all check out okay, which is good. Takes that out of the equation. Um, this is the background board schematic, and so to kind of give an overview of what this guy does, uh, down here we have player sprite information, we have opponent sprite information, <clears throat> and then over here is all of the background sprite logic, um, ROM and and memory and stuff. And so what happens is that all gets funneled over here. This data from the other PCB, this is the other, this is the video PCB, this handles all of the player and opponent sprite logic. Comes in through here and gets muxed here. And then eventually that finds its way through the color proms and you have your RGB. So this is kind of a block diagram of what's going on in that board. You have your opponent sprites mixed with your player sprites, mixed with your background tiles, and it all gets through a, a final mux, and then that's your address that goes and picks out a color in the color prom. You have your RG and B. There's, there's separate color proms for each color. And so what are we seeing on that bottom screen? Is it just the opponent sprites that are screwed up, or the player, or the background tile? No, it's all of them. They're all screwed up. So we know this is fine. So what's the likely culprit? It's this guy right here. Um, one thing I did notice by looking on the board is that this chip is supposed to be, let me see if I can grab my marker here, this is supposed to be an LS, uh, let me spin this around, 353, and I actually looked on what's in the board, and somebody mistakenly put in a bunch of 153s. And so what's the difference between a 353 and 153? If you look at the picture, it's a little bubble. And that bubble makes all the difference because what that bubble is is an inverter on the output okay and so we're supposed to have that inverter we don't have the inverter we're missing it and so what does that mean that means if you look at a piece of memory this color prom for example and as far as the addressing goes you have you know zero zeros is the smallest entry in this palette table and then ff is your largest well what if you invert that right you just you're basically flipping the entire table over and this becomes zero zero and so the colors that you're supposed to be picking are totally at the opposite end of the table. So this thing's, you know, obviously not picking the proper colors, and that, that's what we're seeing. And so what I plan on doing is just ripping out the 153s. I'm not sure why somebody threw them in there. Maybe they just made a mistake. And then throw in some 353s and see if that's the problem. 
Um, these are not very common as far as I know. Um, I don't know if I have any in my little stash here, but I will take a peek and see if I do. And if I do, then we'll just swap them out and see if that uh, fixes things. Yeah, it's a little better. And so yeah, as I suspected, these muxes here, these four muxes, which drive the address information to the color proms, uh, were the wrong type. They were one, what is that, 135s, let me just see here. They were 153s, and we needed 353s. Now I did some research, and I believe there is actually a different ROM, uh, graphic ROM set for this board, actually graphic and prom set, that has... Um, I think I think the graphic ROMs are inverted and these PROMs are kind of messed up a little bit and, and I suspect the reason they did that is because at one point these 353s were rather expensive and they found that the 153s were cheaper and so they just swapped them out for the 153s and then changed the contents of the ROMs to accommodate that so I believe that's what was going on there there is one issue that still remains if you notice there's no player um, shown on the screen here and so the player sprite circuitry is also on this middle PCB that handles the opponent and the player sprites and so I'll have to go through that and figure out what's going on there but we are almost there the other monitor I believe is just fine let me see if I can reach over and flick that yeah so that's looking good too so yeah just one more remaining item and I think this guy will be good to go alright so I have my uh, EEPROM burner here and these are the ROMs for the uh, for the challenger which is the green guy that you can kinda see through and so what I did is I read the contents from that ROM uh, and displaying it on the screen here and you guys probably can't make, can't make out the characters but they're up there and then over here on the other screen I have um, the data from the main ROMs and I don't know if you can tell, you probably can, I'm sure, because of the quality of this video, whatever, but the data is actually inverted. I don't know if you can see it here. So there's a bunch of FFFs, and then over here, it's all zero, zero, zeros. And that confirms my suspicion that, you know, for whatever reason, they decided to swap out those buffers. And if you do that, now you have to come up with a whole new ROM set, and you have to invert all of that data. And so that's what I'm seeing here. Um... So it looks like what's on this board may just be a mishmash of different versions of ROMs and PROMs. Um, and, but luckily, you know, these are, these are EPROMs, so we can simply erase them and then reprogram them with the proper version, uh, which is what I'll do. And that's the version here in MAME. So I'm going to try that. I'm just going to wipe these guys out, load them up with the version that's in MAME, and that should clear everything up with respect to the, uh, for the Challenger ROMs and the graphics and everything that we're seeing. There we go much better. So this guy, if you look at the schematics, there is different section of the logic uh, that's that's marked CHL, and I'm assuming that's for the challenger, so that's all the stuff that blitz this guy, and then CMP, and that's the champion, and that blitz all this stuff. And so yeah, that's all it was, was swapping those ROMs out with an inverted set, and we're all set. Um, you can see here that when I replace these muxes, these data muxes to, uh, to the prompts, I use sockets, and so if you guys who are going to start getting into punch-out repair, um, I would, or, or maybe you're looking to swap your, your punch out for a super punch out. You may want to consider putting sockets here because that way if you end up getting a, um, you know, an inverted set or, or, you know, whatever, um, rather than have to go through the hassle of reprogramming all of the graphic prompts, you can just swap out the one, what is it, one, I keep forgetting, uh, <laughs> 153s for 353s and that should take care of all that garbage. So yeah, we're in good shape. This one will be going out soon. Alrighty, here we have a Super Punch-Out PCB. As you can see, it's got the extra little daughter card here. And this is what we're getting. Complete garbage on the lower screen and likewise garbage on the upper screen. And so first thing I check when I see something like that is the reset. You know, is the watchdog barking? Um, and so with my logic probe here, I can check pin, what is it, pin 26 I think on the Z80, so let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and it is a constant high, which is good, and if I check some of these other signals, like the reads and the writes, you can see that they're toggling, and so the CPU is actually doing something, and the fact that the watchdog is now barking means it's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing, it's executing, you know, program code from the program ROMs, which are down here, and it's able to access the ROMs and the RAMs, and everything else it needs to, to to work so 
It may be that the CPU board here, this top board in the stack, is fine, and there's something going on with the video PCBs. Um, one thing that's unique about um, this game in particular, and some of the other Nintendo games have it as well, is what's called DMA. And so what the uh, what this PCB does is it takes graphical information, it dumps it into these RAMs down here, and then while a video blank happens, it takes a copy of those contents and dumps them onto the two graphics PCBs down here. And then that's the information that actually gets sent to the sprite ROMs to boot the sprites to the screen. So it may be that all this is fine and something DMA is kind of sketchy going on, uh, but we'll see. I'll, I'll take the uh, you know I'll, I'll take the fluke as usual, throw it on here, and see if I can figure out if the ROMs are okay, which I'm sh you know, I suspect they are because things seem to be uh, working. Just looking on the pins here and the RAM too. I'll do RAM checks and all that good stuff and see what's going on. I have a suspicion it's the DMA, but we'll see. Okay, so we're a little bit closer. Uh, I got the game to boot, and there are some graphics glitches. And so what I found was the DMA circuitry was actually fine. Uh, the RAM checks were fine. The ROMs were completely off. Every single one of these ROMs was wrong. Not only was it wrong, but uh, when I did my SIG checks with the Fluke, I would get a different signature every time. So it's almost like... Some of the bits inside the ROMs, whenever I would read them, would return a 1, and other times when I read the same exact memory address, they'd return a 0. Um, certain bits. And um, so I don't know. It was it was really interesting. And, and I have to say, I've never had a case where it actually had a bad set of ROMs and the process, or the watchdog, rather, was not barking. I mean, this is the main program here for the game and so usually if that's screwed up then the program will get lost in the weeds and then the, the watchdog will start barking and that was obviously not the case as we saw with this guy so um, so yeah some of the sprites are actually fine some of the graphics are fine let me switch over to the other monitor here oh it's too late um, but yeah I mean that looks fine the colors are obviously wrong there so I'll have to take a look at that and as we saw uh, earlier there was some sprite issues there are definitely sprite issues so um, yeah, and obviously some palette problems and stuff like that there, so still more to go. Uh, I think what I'm going to do now, now that I know that, um, I mean, it's, again, it's very odd, too, that every single ROM would be bad, but that's what I found here, so uh, given that, I'm going to take a look at all of the graphic ROMs, too, uh, while I have the programmer out, and we'll take a look and see if those are okay, which I suspect they may not be, but who knows. Uh, we'll try them out, and we'll see what's going on, and we'll go from there. Okay, so the graphic uh, ROMs were fine, but I just got done fixing a punch-out where I had similar palette problems, and it ended up being uh, the muxes in this corner. And so based on what I've been seeing and kind of the research I've been doing, I really think I'm just going to swap these guys out and see if that takes care of my palette problems. And uh, based on what I'm seeing with my other punch-out and some stuff that I'm finding out as I go along here, I think that's going to do the trick, so... That looks better. So yeah, two for two. I think this is the second uh, one that I've done where I've had to replace the muxes there and it seems to be okay. Uh, let's let this play through a little bit. We'll see if we have all of our sprites and the proper colors. Looks good. See the player. Awesome. So yeah. I think this one is good to go. Okay, so here's a recap, and I just quickly threw this together on the board. So, um, going back, we have opponent ROMs, we have player ROMs, we have background ROMs, and they're all talking to the palette ROM, which blitz the actual colors to the screen. And they're going through a MUX, which is a 353 in the schematics. Now, at some point in time, Nintendo decided that they weren't going to use 353s anymore, maybe due to price problems or availability or something, and they switched over to 153s. And so before we, I go and mess with this um, this picture here, just imagine this information is passing through this MUX, it's getting inverted, and then it's picking up an entry in this color table here, okay? And so what happens is once we now change this, okay, to a 153, everything's broken, all right? Because now instead of picking an entry down here, it's flipped. We're picking an entry up here, and vice versa. Okay? And Nintendo knew this obviously because they didn't send out you know boards with completely garbage graphics, 
and so they're they you know they fixed it and there's two ways to fix it one is to reprogram this palette prom basically by flipping the entire prom okay so all the entries are flipped the ones that are down here up here and the ones that are up there they're down there and vice versa okay that's one way of doing it the other way of doing it is make up the fact that this is uh, not inverted anymore make up for that by changing the contents of all of these ROMs and it's a pain in the ass but believe it or not they actually did it and there's an alternate version of the ROMs for punch out out there floating around I, I found them um, and so what they did is they took every entry and every single one of these ROMs and inverted the contents okay so you know if there was ff in somewhere they would flip that to be zero zero and, and vice versa i'm not going to go through a bunch of examples on how to invert uh, hex and binary values but you know you get the gist and so those are those are two ways to solve the problem okay either either reprogram this by flipping the entire contents or reprogram every single rom by inverting every single entry in every rom and I've seen both, and so you really have to be careful when you're, you know, repairing these things because you don't know what batch of ROMs you have, and you don't know what batch of ROMs you have, and so you know, it can be a pain in the ass. And so what I found uh, was easiest for me is because I can't reprogram the ROMs, and I really don't feel like reprogramming every single graphic ROM on the entire stack. Is I swapped this for a socket. And I have 353s on hand and 153s, and I can move them around and swap them in and out and figure out, you know, what does the board need to, to get it back into business. So, in short, that's what I found. So, for those of you who are also out there fixing punch out PCBs, something to keep in mind. Take care.